What's up guys, today I'm gonna to show you four different training strategies that you can use to become a faster runner. I'm personally training to run a sub five minute mile, but this will be useful for all different distances, whether you're gonna be a faster 5K runner, a marathon runner, or even a sprinter. So come check it out. Yeah, the tarp's gonna to have to come off. That was an absolute torture. But the number one way you can get faster. showing you guys are based around metabolism and the first one I'm gonna be talking about is your aerobic capacity so aerobic capacity exercise events also known as vo2 max will measure your body's ability to utilize oxygen as a fuel source to create energy these types of events typically last between 5 and 15 minutes and are done at a moderate to high intensity not such a high intensity like you're sprinting and you'll crash early and you won't be able to maintain that pace throughout the whole five to 15 minute period but a high enough intensity where it's about as much as you can do within that given time frame for my aerobic capacity training session today I'm gonna to be running a mile as fast as I can again my goal is to run a sub five minute mile but I'd be happy right now if I'd be at a sub six uh, last time I tried this was a few months ago when I was training for a marathon and I did it at like a 545 so if I'm even close to there I'm gonna be pumped but this is gonna be hard as hell Well, that was absolute a torture. Um, I did the mile in 551, which is about what I expected. Um, obviously, I got a lot of work to do. Shaving off 50 seconds off a mile is tough, tough work. And uh, I'm hoping I can do it in about in the next six months. But with very little training up to this point for this specific event, I'm pretty happy with where I am. Average heart rate for that run was like 170 with like a max of 190. Um, running one mile as fast as you can is one of the hardest, most efficient workouts you can do and no one will really be able to change my mind. But I'll show you guys the next training methods here to come. All right, the next step to get faster is to improve your anaerobic power and capacity. Anaerobic meaning without oxygen. Anaerobic power exercise bouts typically last between just 5 and 15 seconds and are done at maximum intensity. Power meaning being able to generate the most amount of force in the least amount of time. Because these bouts of exercise are done at such a high intensity, you're actually gonna wanna have really long rest periods so that you're able to recover the fuel stores required for the high energy demands of the exercise. What's recommended is typically a one to three work to rest ratio, but can be even as high as a one to 12 work to rest ratio. So for example, if you're gonna be doing a 20 second bout of exercise, a one to three work to rest ratio would mean 60 seconds of rest. We want these longer rest periods so that the body is able to recover so we can restore the ATP and phosphocreatine stores and the exercise can be done at maximum intensity. And today for my anaerobic power exercise event, I'm going to be running hills, which is an exercise as old as time and will always cease to kick your butt. These hills are about 15 yards, which should take me, I don't know, like five seconds, and I'll be doing 40 to 60 second rest periods in between. Let's go get after it. Yeah, the tarp's gonna have to come out for these guys. Those were a little shorter than I thought, so I ended up doing 30 instead of 20 with about 30 second rest periods. 
after rep number 10 and 20, I took like a three to five minute break, but I saved this last rep for you guys. All right, the second half of this workout is to improve anaerobic capacity, which is slightly different than anaerobic power. Anaerobic capacity events are still done at a very high intensity, but typically last between about 30 seconds and two minutes. They use slightly different energy systems than the anaerobic power, which is the phosphocreatine system, while the anaerobic capacity uses the glycolytic system, which is a little more efficient, but takes longer, hence the longer duration. For me today, I'm gonna to be running 200 yard sprints just up and down on the football field. I'm gonna do 10 of them and take about a one to two minute break in between. That certainly kicked my butt today. The next training method is a fun one and actually does not involve running. It is now Friday and I did that one mile run on Monday and those sprints on Tuesday and let me tell you, I was so sore. I cannot remember the last time I've just done sprints. So my upper quads and calves were just annihilated. Wednesday, I just did some upper body work and yesterday I did a nice, easy, slow three mile run. But that brings us into our next phase of the training program today, which is plyometrics. In combination with your anaerobic power work, plyometrics are a great way to improve your overall top speed, while your aerobic and anaerobic capacity work is great at improving your ability to maintain your top speed for a longer period of time. Plyometric and power training is great for improving your overall rate of force development, so you're able to quickly apply force into the ground to propel you forward with every step. They are also great at improving the overall capacity of your central nervous system or your neural drive. With consistent power and plyometric training, your motor units will better be able to recruit those large muscle groups more efficiently so you can propel yourself forward at a faster pace. So I brought some weights and a bench outside and I'm going to walk you guys through this power plyometric training workout with the first part focusing on pure power and the second part focusing on the rate of force development. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Right, guys that wraps up a great workout just so you know I did about five to six reps of those power based movements superset with eight to ten reps of those more rate of force development based movements I did a total of three rounds and took about two minutes rest in between every round I also started today off with a nice three mile run but that is it for today and I'll get back to you with that last training strategy to get faster tomorrow <laughs> And the last training strategy is to improve your aerobic base. So this is done at a much lower intensity than the previous strategies that I talked about with you guys. A lot of people will call this your zone two cardio, and it's done at such a low pace that you are able to hold a conversation like I am here with you guys now. Another tool that people like to use to ensure that their intensity is staying low is to use the math formula. So this equation is 180 minus your age, and that should be the max heart rate that you should have in order to stay in that aerobic zone. So for me, since I'm 24 years old, 180 minus 24 is 156. So the maximum my heart rate should be during an aerobic based session should be 156. Personally, I like to keep it even a little bit lower around that mid 130 range. This aerobic based training is great for improving your overall cardiovascular health, your general endurance, and your ability to metabolize oxygen as a fuel source. And you wanna keep it at a low enough intensity so that you don't creep up into that anaerobic zone and kind of overexert your energy. So 
aerobic base training, although it may seem like you're going slow, it's actually just great for improving your tolerance to the overall weekly mileage. So for me, during my marathon training, my aerobic base training was probably 80 to 85% of my overall training. And now since I'm training for such a shorter distance, it'll still be about 50 to 60% of my training. So this will allow me to get my miles in, but also it doesn't overexert myself. So they're kind of like half recovery runs so that I'm able to get my miles up and then feel refreshed for my, my for more of my tempo speed-based workouts. As counterintuitive as it might seem, sometimes you just have to run slower in order to get faster. Again, it's all about balancing your intensity, your volume, and your recovery. So if you guys are able to balance those three things, you'll be able to run faster. But the number one way you can get faster at a certain distance is to run that distance. So if you wanna get faster at running one mile, you should start running one mile. If you wanna be a faster marathon runner, the best thing to do is to be run more marathons. So thanks again guys for following along. Hope you liked the video. Best of luck of training out there.